Hi everyone, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. Some time ago, actually one or two years ago, we ran a first simulation on a public model of a Cybertruck. So, not a model that we created, something we found off the internet, which then represented kind of the pictures that we saw on the internet. And in the analysis, we saw that we had a drag coefficient of 0.43, and now Tesla is claiming a drag coefficient of just 0.34. So let's see what they changed to actually make this possible. So if you look at this image, for example, the first thing that strikes us is the windscreen wiper. In some of the talks and interviews with the Tesla engineers and designers, they actually indicate that this addition of the windscreen wiper, especially with this added element here, is actually good for aerodynamic drag. And we can understand why, because if you look at this model, the old simulation that we ran, you have kind of a 90 degree angle between the flat front windscreen and the almost vertical side windows and, and the side of the A pillar here. So there's air gathering lateral momentum. So you can see this, there's streamlines going to the side here, and then the air needs to jump around this corner, but it has way too much momentum. So instead of following this geometry, which is impossible, it'll just go too far and then curl up into a vortex around the A pillar and create flow separation, which is what you see here. So if you have a windscreen wiper there, Yes, granted, it will be like an extra edge that you need to cross, but if there's like an upward edge here, which has an angle in between the vertical and the horizontal, so something at 45 degrees, which is what, is, which is what we would guess uh, based on this picture, then the air needs to jump up, then ramp down on a 45 degree edge, and then go from the 45 degree surface to the 90 degree surface, which is a, a larger radius, actually, if you combine these two surfaces, which reduces the flow separation vortex creation and so on. Another thing that we can see is that on this model there were massive insets, so a, a difference in offset here between the windows and the rear top roof edge and the side here, um, creating big flow separations. Um, on the new car this seems to have been reduced by quite a lot. They're not flush, um, so they're not entirely um, at the same level. There's still like an offset between the glass and the side of the Cybertruck, the roof here, uh, but it's actually much reduced compared to this model. So windscreen wiper and the offset reduction here will drastically reduce the flow separation on the roof edge. Another thing that they mentioned in the videos is that the front bumper now does have some curvature. So you can see it here nicely in this picture. This one had a completely flat front face, which means that you have a lot of pressure buildup almost to your stagnation pressure, which means that the air needs to just jump to the top, to the bottom, left and right. It still needs to do that now, but because of the curvature, if you look at top view of the truck, um, more of the air will be motivated to go left and right because you will have something bulging out, so pressure up, uh, buildup happens a bit sooner or a bit later on the sides, just relative difference, and then it accelerates left and right, which means you have less pressure buildup, less motivation for the air to actually go to the top and the bottom. And if you have less air being motivated to go to the top, you have less flow separation because there's just less mass flow of the air going to the top. And then you can kind of avoid the sharp edge a bit more. We still have this sharp edge, um, but I think it's been toned down just a little. Um, this face is like 90 degree angle, 90, 90 degree angle. I think the one in between the front bumper and the middle one here, the horizontal one, is a bit um, more shallow. So that should be good for flow separation. So curved bumper, less motivation to go to the top and less flow separation there. What we also see is that these headlights are now flush with the side panel here. Whereas before, at least on this model, um, there was this small pocket of air here, um, uh, so the small pocket where the air could get trapped and this would create flow separation here around the sides. So at the front bumper, <coughs> smaller angles, big round here at the front should reduce the flow separation that we see here on this sharp edge, um, as well as here on the sides. Then other things that we saw or that we heard in videos um, released by Tesla is, for example, the gap between the lower and upper part of the bumper here. So before, at least on this model again, uh, you had this slot here where the air could actually be channeled through and then feed into the wheel wells. This has been made much larger plus this blocking effect here of the bumper or the fender is actually reduced. So this is now a clear path for the air to travel inside of the wheel well and actually help out with the aerodynamics there uh, and feed some air into that one. We still have the wheel covers, which is good. 
What is also very noticeable is this air deflector, which is present in front of the front wheels and the rear wheels. So this air deflector will avoid one of the problems that we saw on the previous model. So the analysis that we ran, first of all, I think the wheels were sticking out too much to the side, so they're catching, catching air directly, uh, whereas on, on, on the pictures that we see, they're more inset to, in the car, which means they're, uh, they're hidden by the fenders and, and by the bodywork. Still, the air could hit the tires full on at the front here, which means you get a tire wake left, right and bottom. And that's not very nice for, for aerodynamics uh, because the, the wheels do act like a mixer, it's a very rough surface. So if you can actually push the air downward and sideways, so downward towards the ground and around left, right of the wheels, you can actually avoid the direct head-on collision of the air towards the wheels and this reduces the tire wake and the drag. You can also see this at the rear, for example, uh, quite large air deflectors that we have there. So we had the curved front bumper, we had the flush headlights, we also have the door handles, which were still present in the previous model, even though they were flush and not doing much. Now they're completely gone, uh, because you can just operate the doors by holding your hand um, in this area. And that's about it in terms of aerodynamic updates. Um, and of course, the, the Cybertruck still has the very beneficial base profile, which is a soft angle at the front and a much softer angle still at the rear, which allows for very nice pressure recovery, especially because this is all closed with the tonneau cover um, and if it's as flush as possible you won't see much flow separation there so the base profile is very good and it seems like they actually tweaked a lot of the details which is something that we suggested in our video um, one or two years ago in our article that this is something that they would have to do to bring down the drag coefficient that's exactly what they have done not that they listen to us obviously but this is exactly what what um, any engineer would do working on the aerodynamics um, add some small tweaks and tricks to reduce the aerodynamic drag so Sounds quite credible to get a drag coefficient of 0 0.34 and we much look forward to your comments. Drop them in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.